Hello and welcome to Ariva Academy Online Administration Webinar. My name is Manny and I'll be your trainer for today's session, How to Create Event Form Web Pages. As a reminder, we are recording today's session and will be available for viewing in about two to three days on the website. You can find these recorded sessions by heading to ariva.com and selecting services in the main menu, then selecting Ariva Academy from the drop down menu. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So today we were talking about event form web pages. So these event forms can range anything from, you know, annual gala balls to 5K runs to, you know, really any type of event you can think of as well as virtual events. Um, in today's climate, I decided what we could kind of focus on was a little bit of setting up a virtual event. They're all typically gonna be set up the same way. Of course, it just all depends on the options that you're providing for your registrants, uh, you know, your sponsors and things like that. So as I said, today's event will stay focused on the virtual side of things and kind of how one of those can be set up within the Exceed Further software. Um, with the event side of things, it does start inside the database and then gets finalized on the online form side, online administration side. So basically you get all your database parameters in, you get your event set up, and then you get a nice draft form ready for you guys on the online side to just finalize, you know, add a nice banner to, add some text to, and kind of really just pretty it up and then finalize it for the uh, public to link up to your guys' website and, you know, Facebook and social media and stuff like that. All right, so to go ahead and get started with events, the first thing you're gonna do is on the left-hand side, you're just gonna go ahead and click on your event manager. And once you do, you'll get brought right to your event manager event list. On the right-hand side over here, you will have the option create online event. So specifically, if you do want an online form, then you will need to make sure that you do click the create online event option. This is what creates the form for us. Once you select the create online event, you have the option at the top to copy from another event, which will let you select from your guys's past events to help copy some of the parameter values over, such as ticketing options and things like that, which can be a great time saver. Um, if we're starting one from scratch, which we're going to do today, great, then we can go ahead and just start filling in the mandatory categories. What you see mandatory here is just that it is the mandatory fields required to just get an online form up. Of course, you guys can use and fill in the rest of the fields if you wanted to. So those are used for some back-end database numbers and things like that, which is great, but not always required if you're just looking to get your form up right away and start taking registrations. So the first thing we'll start with is the event code. That's just in kernel code for uh, you guys on the database side. So it's a nice shortened name when you're doing reporting and things like that. So for this instance, we're just going to go ahead and say it's going to be special event virtual. So we'll just call it SAV and we'll call it 20. All right, the event name is just going to be that. We're going to just call it special event. Virtual, perfect. And right underneath that, we're going to have the event date. The event date is just that it is the day of the event. So this event, we're going to say, takes place October 17th on Saturday and it ends on October 17th, Saturday as well. On the online side, we are gonna be able to set the um, time, you know, time slot that the event is in on Saturday, uh, but we just set the date here on the database side. So then after that, we're just gonna move over to the right and you'll see three other values here that we need to set in as well. So I'm gonna call it special event 2020. And we're just gonna go ahead and select our category. So I already added a virtual against category. This is these category and reason codes and things like that are set under the code section under administration. Uh, so I'll show you guys that here in a second. Under reason code, we can just scroll down. This reason code here is just gonna be a general default reason code. When we're setting up our ticketing options, we will be able to set each ticketing option with a reason code and a fund. If we do not set the reason code on the ticketing option, then it will default back to this reason code we set here. So typically never use unless you don't set the reason code when you're setting the ticket it up. The contribution name can be just that, basically the same name as the event. It's just an internal use field we use on the online side to track where the gift came from. Registration ends date is just that as well. It is gonna be the date, the last time we can sell a ticket online is. So if the event happens on the 17th, great, we can say, you know what, three days before the event. You know what, actually, since it's virtual, we can say two days before the event. We can, you know, a little less time that we need to, you know, get the sponsor stuff up and all that good stuff. Great, so we'll say Thursday is the last time we can sell a ticket for the event that happens on Saturday. 
Wonderful. And then as we go through, we Facebook share, if we're interested in that, we can turn it on. Is paid is if we're charging for the event, then we definitely want to check that. And then of course we can fill in the street address, name, city, state, and zip over here as well. Since it's a virtual event, that stuff will not be needed. All right, so we got all our fields filled in. We're looking good. Down in the bottom left, we also have the option to add additional questions. So we can capture attendees' names. So right, we sell a ticket and they buy three of them so we can get all three attendees' names that are gonna be coming. And if we want to ask those attendees questions, then we can as well, such as meal choice, age, you know, uh, shoe size, just depending on what the event is. Uh, you know, many different questions will work there. Uh, so today we're just gonna work on age. Since it's a virtual event, all we're gonna do is say, hey, we want your guest names and we want your age, you know, the age of the attendees that are gonna be coming. Great, and we're just gonna go ahead and say save and next. Now on the next screen, we are moved on to our ticketing options. This is where we're gonna go ahead and we're going to set up our individual ticketing options that people are gonna be able to purchase. So we just, to do that, we're just gonna click the plus sign in the top left. We have the code option here and we have the ticketing name. So I have some ready for us that I can copy and paste in. And ideally it's the same thing for you guys. Um, you know, if you're not coming up with the event from scratch, you'll just be able to take the ticket and options you guys currently sell, you know, on your paper PDF forms that you mail out and things like that. You typically just call them the same exact names. You're just transferring it over to an online form. In this instance, we are going to uh, set up our own. So we're gonna go ahead and say, VISB sponsor is a thousand. Our guests are going to be six. All right. And our total quantity is going to be how many of these VIP sponsors we can sell. So in this instance, we're gonna say we have one, actually we can take five. Meaning if we sell five VIP sponsors, it will say sold out on the online form. The guest option here, and sorry, I skipped over that one, is how many guests per this ticketed option. So this VIP sponsor is allowed to bring six guests to the virtual event, or they're typically signing up six guests for the virtual event in this instance. So that's where we put in six. As we go through setting these up, you're gonna see we have different kind of watch party options. Um, and those we can go ahead and you're gonna see are kind of set up in a couple different ways. So and we'll see how they're set up differently. Our sort order is gonna be one, that is gonna be the order that this option appears on the event form itself. Is active is just that, it means it's an active ticket in the database side. So if our database admins are you know, setting up tickets and purchasing them internally for people that are sending checks in, then this is an active ticket that they can use and sign people up on the event. Sometimes you'll have you know, a ticket and option you don't want available right now, but you wanna preset it and then you can make it available at a certain time. That way you can even make sure your database admins aren't using that option either. Public ticket means it is public on the event form itself. So if you need to hide the ticket option from the public, then you uncheck this option, but the database admins can still sign up individuals behind the scenes if needed. Sometimes this works great with staff tickets and things like that, where you need to capture the RSVP, but maybe it's a zero dollar ticket or a lesser, you know, a lesser fee one that you don't want to show to the public. No problem. So public ticket will will check. Single registration in this instance, it is not going to be used in an event like this, but the option is there. So if you were doing like a free virtual event and you wanted to capture each individual attendee's name, phone number, and their full address and everything like that, no problem, you can check that box and it will turn the registration option into a single checkbox. So they can only buy one of the ticketed option you're selling. They can't you know, sign up three people, four people, they can only sign themselves up, then the next person has to come in and do the same and the same on from there. Works great when needed, not needed in an event like this. If someone wants to come in and buy a couple different packages, no problem, we wanna give them that ability. Here we can go ahead and set the reason code and the fund for this event option. So this is gonna be the virtual event sponsor and we're just gonna go ahead and say it is on restricted funds. And then for the actual name that we got here or the remarks section, that is actually some text that I already have ready. And you can see here just a little bit of text that says registration for the full virtual experience, logo on pre-event and event slides, optional watch party platter for 10, kind of a unique idea that we've seen some organizations do, as well as program listed as, you know, listed as VIP sponsor within the event. So this is kind of what that additional information section is made for, is to kind of explain what those ticketing options are 
and what they're going to be you know given for signing up for this stuff so we just go ahead and say save and that's our first one great we're good to go and we're just going to go ahead and add a couple more we're just going to do them a little bit quicker so we're going to go ahead and say special event party all right and this one's just going to be special event watch party so we seen some organizations use it where they call them watch parties which is nice in its own right and it's just the ability to uh you know kind of name it a different way um you know instead of calling them sponsors or attendees and things like that you really are selling the watch party experience uh, and you know the idea of it uh, so the fee here is going to be this one is going to be 600 I think that's right yes All right, and our guest is going to be six as well. So, you know, big watch party, just like the sponsor, except the sponsor is a sponsorship, pay a little bit extra, where the watch party themselves still get to attend. And you'll see here that the remarks section that we're going to have for them is that registration for full virtual experience and then a watch party platter for five, which is nice, um, you know, in that regards. So we'll make the actual guest five, wonderful. Total quantity, we can say we can sell 10 of these, sort order is going to be two is active public and now we can just go ahead and set our you know that's going to be a registration and that's going to be unrestricted great so that's our special event watch party sign up there great we're going to go ahead and just add a couple more next one is going to be our house watch party and this is pretty much the not the hardest part of setting up our our registrations but it is the most mundane you just do need to get your specific registration options in as this is what you know you're giving those guests to sign up on so getting this one down and making sure we have it set up right is very important because it does drive how the form is going to work and how it interacts with our guests so our house watch party is going to be four and they get again we just have some nice text here and we're going to set our registration so by making sure we set four guests that allows us to capture those four names and the ages for the individuals that are going to be attending uh, which is nice unrestricted perfect sort order is going to be three quantity we can say 10 that's fine is active public ticket save and we just keep on moving through got a two more we're going to add date night party DMP. that fee is going to be a hundred dollars guess is going to be two and the idea is there you know date night party uh total quantity we can say we have 20 and of course if you, we don't have an infinite option so you can just put in an over you know a bigger number than you guys think yourself it's you know we'll bear you know we may sell 10 okay you can put in like 50 just to make sure you don't sell out all right under here we have sort order so that's going to be four is active public ticket and again set that reason code and set the fund um, so same concept on each one and if you have a nice message perfect all right and then our last one here is going to be our fund for one I see it's going to be fifty dollars you guys will see how this all nicely comes together of course the ticket and options as I said they'll come directly from your guys' standard forms um, you can just kind of set them up if you're making them up you know first time virtual event it may be nice to have like a little sheet or a guide to go off of that you can kind of copy and paste in it saves you some time in here than uh, trying to make it up on the go so we can say 50 of those we have sort order is going to be five is active public ticket and a registration and fund all right awesome save there and then last but not least we are just going to do a donation amount so this one is important as it is just going to be an additional donation here we just set everything to zero four five six so this is going to be number seven in our list we're going to say is active public and we have again the ability to set this as our virtual event donation so the reason code is different than sponsor and then is different than the registrations where the sponsor has a different reason code as well and you can see that listed here but they're all going to the same fund they're all going to be tied to the same event which is perfect um, oops and then if you need to edit any one of these you just double click them and it'll open right back up so i forgot to add my little note perfect save as well as double clicking you have the little edit option up here so as long as it's highlighted gray click the edit pencil it'll go right back in edit mode and you can make your changes the donation option is going to get set on the form side and you're going to see that in a second so now that we're done setting up our ticket and options we are good to go we're just going to simply go ahead and say save and close and our event is now created and we have a draft version of that event ready to go on the online side 
So to get to the online side, we're just gonna simply click on online administration. It's gonna bring us right to the sign in option. We're gonna go ahead and sign into online and right on the left hand side, we're gonna go to our event web pages. All right, once it loads, we're gonna have event web pages. We click on that, we're gonna have all our events, whether they were in draft mode, whether they're live. So we click right on view all events. And we're gonna see them all listed here shortly. I think we have a lot of events back here. All right, awesome. And as you can see, it's all the events, whether they're in draft mode, upcoming. Um, you're gonna see them all in a nice order. I'm just gonna go to the last page. My event should be there. Maybe not. Oh, these are out there. Okay, perfect. It's in date order. It's gonna be somewhere right here. Perfect, my special event, virtual 2020. So for you guys, you'll only have one or two events listed, so it'll be nice and uh, organized on your side. So we have our special event 2020. To access the event, we're just gonna click on it or click on view. Either one works, it'll bring us to the same spot. It opens our event right up, and you can see that we are in a draft mode, kind of ready to go, but we need to add some you know, niceness to the form itself. So we're gonna add a banner, we're gonna add some descriptive text, we're gonna make sure the price is showing the amount. You can see our donation isn't set up just yet. So we're gonna add some minor things that's really gonna help us get going here. So to edit the event, just simply click on settings in the top right. It's gonna throw it right into settings mode. And once in settings mode, you're gonna just simply scroll down and we're gonna be able to make some nice changes to the event itself. Here you can see we have the title option. It is just that it is the title of the event. So if we wanted to change the public title, we can, which is really nice. The name inside the database can stay exactly how we want it. The title on the front end is a little bit, um, you know, we can make it a little bit more bold, presented by, and things like that, where we don't have to affect the database name. Down here we have the location, so we can just go ahead and fill in a simple location. Uh, that's perfect and we can go ahead and upload a display image. So even though we're hiding a location, it is mandatory, so we just fill in anything at that point. Go ahead and say upload image, and you can see it'll pull right from your computer, and I believe I do have a nice image here. Perfect, and I'm just gonna go ahead and upload that. The image banner is about 1600 by 400, that's the best size for it, but typically as long as you upload a rectangular image, you are good to go. Scroll down, we have the dates, so we can go ahead and show those, and we're just gonna go ahead and set the time. So we can say this virtual event happens at six o'clock. It is gonna be in military time. So just add 12 to whatever time is it is. And then it's gonna end at, let's say eight o'clock. Um, we'll say nine, 2100. All right, great. Here, um, our online registration ends on 1015 at midnight. We're gonna say 1015 at 1159. So that way we can make sure, you know, 10.15 happens, 11.59, then 10.16 rolls over and the event's gonna close or close for registration, of course. So that looks great. Down below, we have some other nice options. On success redirect, you've seen this on our donate forms as well. Redirect them to a place of your choosing when they successfully register. Automatic sign-in and account information to donor works side by side with the peer-to-peer -peer side of things. Not needed on an event like this, but if they if you did want them to kind of you know create their own fundraiser, we redirect them, sign them in, send them their account information for later. So those all kind of work together. Tell a friend's a great option. We'll review that here in a second. We can go ahead and add a nice description. Of course, like I said, I have some nice stuff pasted or copied ready to go. So we can just center that. Additional information is just that. Any questions, concerns, you can kind of paste in that type stuff right in additional information, which is great. As you scroll through there, um, you're gonna see the ticketed options. And the one thing we're gonna check is that show ticket and option fee. And then down below, you're gonna see some nice options that we can set, which is really important per each registration choice. So as we scroll down, you're gonna see this is the event sponsor and we can set the gift type that the gift is gonna come in as. Is this gonna be a sale in your database or is this going to be a gift? Completely up to you and you have control over each individual registration option. So the sponsor can be different than the donation, which can be different than the registration tickets themselves. Completely up to you guys when you're setting this up. The other option that you're gonna have that you're gonna be able to set per ticket and option is this gift value same as fair market value or gift value same as gift amount with fees. So where this one really is important is the same as fair market value brings in the gifts with a gift value of zero. 
So of course it'll be a $5,000 or a thousand dollar sponsorship. The value of that sponsorship will be $0. This allows you guys on the database admin side then to correct the value yourselves, of course, for your guys' tax, per, you know, tax uh, letters at the end of the year. So that way, if the value is only 75% of the donation amount or the sponsorship amount, you guys can simply update that manually on your side, but the values will come in at zero from the start, which helps a little bit there. All right, coming in gift amount without fees, of course, that'll just equal one-to-one, -one, where the amount of the gift will be 1,000, the value of the gift will be 1,000 and so on and so forth for the rest of the gifts. So set those two values for each one. And as we scroll through, we're gonna scroll through all those others. We're not gonna change anything there. And we're gonna go right to our donation option. To set this option as a donation value, we just simply check the box donation. So like I said, it gets set up on this side and we did all the other work on the other side, you know, the reason code, things like that. The one thing I will change is the gift type for this will be a gift. And that's usually where I see this makes sense. Or if all your registration options are gift twos, then of course, make sure to set that. As we go down, we have some nice options such as attendees. We can turn those on. By setting this option to mandatory, it means attendees displays. If it's optional, then they check the box to add the attendees. So it doesn't mean that all attendees are mandatory. It just means it is a visual display of all of the names that they should fill in. What you can do is check this box if you like to require all attendees names. Completely up to you. Sometimes can cause abandonment of registration, right? If they're buying a set of 10 tickets and they don't have all 10 attendees names, they may come back at a later time to give you guys that sponsorship. So uh, sometimes good if it's required, but sometimes it can do what we just talked about there. As we scroll down, we have event UDFs. You just set that to show, same thing there. You set it to mandatory, means it always displays. There's a little visual bug here. The event UDF will show when we come back in the next time. Keep scrolling through. We have tribute gift, not needed, but there. Uh, through the about you, just like on our donate forms, we can turn off the person on behalf. We can turn on birthday. We can turn on gender questions, not needed here. Our contact preferences, just like our donate form, we can turn those off, turn those on if we need to by just setting them to show or hide. Remember, these values do update the person's record within your database to do not mail, do not phone if they do uncheck any of these values. So if you don't want that to affect you know, the database side of things, just simply go ahead and hide those and then the preferences stay how you set them. Scroll through that, down below our gift acknowledged, just like we've talked about before, gift acknowledged is just that, has the, no matter what this, what is checked in this box, the automatic online notification will send. And from there, this box tells the database whether that gift is acknowledged or not. Is that notification good enough? Great, then we leave it checked. If not, and you guys want to send them a physical letter or a letter out of the communications module as well, wonderful, then you just simply uncheck that box. Meaning any gift coming in on this form will come in not acknowledged technically. No matter what, they're always gonna get that online notification though. Always, there's no way to turn that off. All right, down below, make this gift anonymous. We don't need that. We can just say registration comments. These registration comments or gift comments will feed directly into the gift itself. So it will be a, in the notes section of the gift within your database when you take a look at these gifts. So if they leave you a note, you can look at it right there. Mail and preferences. Just like we've talked about before, we can turn on some of these. These are coming directly from you guys' mail and tags. Uh, so we'll turn on those three. Those look good. Confirmation message, again, can be used and sometimes great for events. It is simply like a terms of service pop-up box. If you turn this on, you have control over the OK or cancel pop-up box that, is, that pops up. It becomes a yes or no. And like I said, it works similar to like a terms of service. You guys can control the text that goes in here. So, you know, by clicking yes, you're agreeing to everything above. We've seen some organizations use this as like a photograph waiver, you know, hey, by selecting yes, you're agreeing that photographs may be taken at the events and some of them may be used in our publications and things like that. Great, they select yes, they sign up for the event, they agree to your guys' you know, terms of service there. If they hit no, they're brought right back to the form. So works great when needed. If not, you can just simply go ahead and set it to hide. Um, I'll set it to show just so we can show it off um, when we're taking a look at the form on the live side. Looks good. We're just going to go ahead and say publish and go ahead and say OK. All right. Our event is now published and ready to go. We've got our attendees and fees, and you can see we're starting to look nice and really start you know, getting this going to uh, link it out to the public. 
Last thing we're going to look at before we go to the uh, public side and look at it is under settings. If you click settings again and kind of where we just came from, on the left hand side here, you're going to have the notifications option. That is just that it is the notifications that are being sent out for this event. So right here, you simply click that. As soon as you click notifications, it will bring you right there to the notifications for this event. You can see all of them there that can be sent out. Not all of them may be used, but th this is where they come from if you were, you know, we're looking for them. The main one that we're looking at is the event registration notification. This is the one that will go to the registrants themselves. So you'll see, you know, your registration for, it'll pull in the event name, and feel free to update these to your liking as they are specific to this event only. So it won't affect your next event. You'll be able to customize those as well. All right, awesome. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take a look at our event on the publish side of things. So to do that, we like to use incognito windows or private window. That way we don't even have to sign out from what we were doing. And once we do, it's going to pull up all our upcoming events on our upcoming events list. And I'll show you where his guys where to grab the link from and, uh, you know, get those events linked out to the public. So there we have our special event 2020. Again, that's just a list of events. Usually you won't send your registrants there. You're going to send them directly to the event page we're looking at here. That link is going to be grabbed right from the share button right here. And you're just going to grab this link that we're looking at. That will always be your direct link to the event itself. Of course, then you also have your share on Facebook and share on Twitter options as well. Down below, you can see our beautiful, nice special event virtual 2020, our nice options that we added. And you can see our nice setups that we did kind of it all come in full circle, which is great. So from here, we have our nice VIP sponsor. He's at the top. We move them up, which is fantastic. And then as our nice watch parties, which is kind of a new interest and idea on that virtual side of things, you know, hosting a virtual event. You know, you're not selling so much tickets, but you can sell watch parties. These watch parties come with platters. You know, really nice incentive on, uh, you know, getting people to sign up. And then last but not least, our donation, you know, unable to attend, and I put attendee, oops, and unable to attend, but wish to contribute, great. Then you can simply go ahead and make a donation, or you can always even change this word and to say additional donation, you know, on top of your registration and kind of word it however you like. But as you see, it is just an open donation amount they can give to. Now, if a watch party does purchase a ticket, great. Remember, we turned our attendees on, we made a mandatory. So here you can see we have our first name, last name, and of course, we have our nice preferences. So age, and we'll just have to change that. This was for a birthday party option. So we can just say age of guests, something like that. Um, and if we had any additional questions as well, those questions would appear here for each attendee's name that we were asking. So and remember, we can also make these mandatory if we wanted to. Just remember that does require them to fill in a name for each individual one. And then as we scroll through, it is just that nice, simple event form. They fill out their about you, their billing info, have their credit card information put in. They can, of course, opt into those mail-in preferences we talked about. And then last but not least, that submit option, this is that pop-up that we were talking about, where if they select yes, they go ahead and they move through the registration process, card gets processed, they get a notification automatically, and they are good to go. If they hit no, no problem. They just didn't accept the terms, but they also don't register for the event. So can come in handy if needed, um, as you guys can see there. All right, awesome. Thank you guys so much for attending the Areva Academy session. If you guys have any questions on event setup, um, you know, virtual, non-virtual, just reach out to us at support at Thanks so much and have a great day.